You certainly are persistent. I'm terribly busy to find the clue trap there. <laughs> Your incessant buzzing around my head like some irksome gadfly when I'm this busy is well it's making me very disagreeable. Ancient Automaton Coloctus. Welcome back, everyone, to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In this episode, we're taking on the dungeon's boss now. Um, I gotta explain a few things about this. Uh, I'm doing this in post-commentary for two reasons. One, um, to make this boss fight... Well... Well, to make the video itself um, better, uh, I have to. I had to speed up this boss fight because I took far too long. Um, I I believe the boss fight took 20 plus minutes altogether, and I'm not keeping that all together. I'm just gonna speed it up in a second here. Um, also, uh, about halfway through the boss fight. Um, my uh, my mom went to sleep at that time, and she started banging on the wall because I was still talking. So I couldn't really record at all. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna do this in post commentary because it's easier. And while we're doing that, I guess um, because I don't really have much to say about this boss fight, and I need to fill up all this time, um, I'm just gonna talk to you guys about a few things like um, what Zelda means to me because this is the 25th anniversary of Zelda and all. Um, although now that it's 2012, it's soon to be the 26th, um, later this year. Uh, I will talk to you what it means, about what it, what Zelda means to me as a person, um, and as a gamer. Uh, if you guys have not, um, seen the, uh, the, the, the little story that I wrote at in the description, then I suggest you look at it now, because I'll be reading it um, as part of this little look back on what Zelda means to me. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, read it together. I'm writing this the night before Skyward Sword is released. It's 4am here in California, I've only been able to get three hours of sleep. Since I ever bega began gaming, I had two heroes stand with me since the beginning. Sonic the Hedgehog, who is arguably the hedgehog that brought me into gaming, and Link, the little hi the little Hillian, which is the way I pronounce it, who gave me something greater. I love Sonic the Hedgehog for giving me something I'll never be able to let go of, nor would I want to, but Link gave me something more. He gave me a solid image. He made me a true gamer. I owe him for the kind of life I'll lead. I've chosen to make a career out of my interest in gaming. I started this fantastic hobby on YouTube, in which I've met so many outstanding and amazing people, including my girlfriend, Erin. None of this could have... <sighs> Apologize, I, I don't know why it's, made, I'm, it's so difficult for me to read lately. None of this would have happened had I not played The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Back when I was just a wee lad of seven or eight years old, and since then I've grown up with Link, watched him evolve from the Hillian boy to the hero of time, from a simple islander to the hero of winds, and from a goat farmer to the hero of light. He's defined me as a gamer and taught me so many important morals. I'll carry forever and teach my kids someday. No matter the outcome and no matter what you might face, so long as you have the courage you can win. You will win. 
I'd like to say happy birthday to Shigeru Miyamoto, who recently turned 59 years old four days ago, as of the release date of Skyward Sword, I believe. Without your creations, I wouldn't be who I am today. And of course, I'd like to say happy birthday to Link. 25 years of rewriting the fantasy adventure genre and still giving us more. I now stand ready to share my experiences of living with The Legend of Zelda for more than 10 years with this Let's Play. And I won't be alone. I'll be sharing it with all of you, reading this. My childhood, my teenage years, and what will be a glimpse of my future will meet in an emotional clash of anticipation and nostalgia. I'll make memories not only of my experiences, but of all of yours as well. 25 years have led to this moment. Here's to 25 more. And as a, uh, what I thought was a great quote from ZeldaUniverse.net, which I found uh, as an article um, about uh, the night before Skyward Sword, um, Avalanche Mike put up a post, and he described his experiences um, the night before Skyward Sword, saying, Together, today, we will embark on our own journey, one of shared experiences, of individual perceptions, but with one shared love at the heart of it. That was... I, I don't want to say that was the best way to explain how I feel about The Legend of Zelda, um, but I only have a small description box to put those feelings into words. Um, as I said in the in the little description, I said that I started the Legend of Zelda series when I was seven or eight years old. I would assume eight. Um, I want to say. Uh, with Ocarina of Time. Um, I had a babysitter at the time because my mom was... Uh, she She's still kind of a little bit protective. Um, I want to say that at least. Well, well then again, what mother, what mother really isn't? Um, we had a babysitter who had a Nintendo 64, and we did too. Um, we got one for Christmas one year. Um, so he brought over his games. Uh, just to keep us, you know, make his job a little bit easier. And one of the games that he brought over at one time was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, I only got to play a little bit of it uh, while he was there, while he was babysitting us, but I I really enjoyed it. I wanted to play the game more. Uh, problem was, of course, we didn't own it. Um, in fact, I don't believe that I got to play it until a year or two um, before the GameCube came out. Um, around that time, I want to say. Uh, I played it extensively. Um, my cousin, who only visits here maybe once a year if she's lucky, um, I played Ocarina of Time while she was here. Uh, which kind of explains how much I love the game. Uh, it, it kind of... Uh, well, it, it kind of made me more of a gamer. Um, it, I, beforehand I had only played, as I said, Sonic. I played um, some PS1 games that my friend had. I, I played a few Nintendo 64 games um, because we had it. Um, so I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't really all that into gaming uh, seriously um, as I was until after I played Ocarina of Time. Um, when the GameCube came out, uh, I finally got to play The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask on the Zelda promotional disc. Um, Majora's Mask was pretty intimidating. Uh, considering the only other time I had experience with it was another friend who had it. Um, I ended up playing Majora's Mask so much um, because I got I had purchased the strategy guide for it. Uh, I still have it somewhere, I just can't find it. Um, I purchased the strategy guide and I played the game so much that uh, I actually broke the disc and I don't think I've ever seen this happened to a disc before. 
um, the disc layers literally were falling, were ripping apart because I had played it so much. Um, after that, I got, uh, I believe I got the Oracle games, um, then A Link to the Past on the Game Boy, which I never finished. I still haven't finished A Link to the Past, but I've got it on Wii Virtual Console now, so I'll get that. Um, I After that, I got, I got Wind Waker, which ended up becoming my favorite Zelda title as of now, um, although Skyward Sword is making a pretty big push. Um, I'm still, I'm still going through Link's Awakening, I'm st just starting Minish Cap on the 3DS Ambassador games, um, I've, you know, I've played Phantom Hourglass, I, I still have yet to play Spirit Tracks, I have yet to touch Spirit Tracks, let alone play it, um, I, it was... I've, I've played the majority of the Zelda titles. Um, oh, speaking of which, also, I have the original Legend of Zelda on the NES. You know, the, the gold cartridge. I have an NES up uh, in my room, too. I have yet to complete it. I have yet to play Zelda 2 on the 3DS. Although I'd like to play it on the NES rather than the handheld. Because I don't know if you can save it. Um... I, I I played so much of the Zelda series. It became my favorite video game series. It 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 gave me my favorite video game genre. It gave me what kind of it made what kind of stories I like to read. Uh, what kind of person I wanted to emulate it really, really just, it defined a lot of me, and I owe the series for that. It mean, it, it just means a lot to me, and I can't, I can't, I don't think I can really express perfectly what uh, The Legend of Zelda does mean to me. So, that's that's the reason why I wanted to do this game. The it's the 25th anniversary. It's my t it was my 10th anniversary of first playing the series, and you know it it did all of this for me. It it gave me my let's playing hobby. It gave me a lot, and you know I I can only hope that that's conveyed. Um, through the kind of work that I put in on on the games, on the Legend of Zelda games that I do, um, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, um, I did before. Um, I'm actually kind of I don't really like the job that I did on them. Commentary was fine. I just don't like the job I did on them because, well. I can do much better now. Um, I I did like I think I still say that my favorite my I still feel that my best work was with Twilight Princess. Uh, I I don't think I've ever put that much work into a series other than Kingdom Hearts One um, or into a game other than Kingdom Hearts One. Uh, and even Kingdom Hearts 1 kind of falls short a little bit. Um, the Wind Waker I'm still doing, but hopefully I can get, you know, put as much work as I really want to um, put in for whatever games of the series I do. Um... So I, I just hope that uh, that com that comes across because I love love this series. It's very close to my heart, and I I mean I really I really don't know how to 
express it well enough. Um, I mean, even even giving away or putting up on eBay uh, and getting rid of my old Ocarina of Time uh, cartridge uh, that was part of the Let's Play that I did, even that was extremely tough because that cartridge means a lot to me. So, uh, it's, this is, yeah, this is, it, it was really tough to do, and I know I'm rambling at this point, but I just, you know, I can't really get the words out that I wanted to, it's really tough to explain how you feel about something that means so much to you. So, I think the best way is just to say that I I don't think I'll ever stop playing The Legend of Zelda. I won't ever get rid of I won't ever get rid of the games of it that I have. I won't I don't want to get rid of it. I don't ever want to stop experiencing the series. So 25 years from now I'll still be playing it even though I'll be halfway through my life. Um, and quite honestly, I can't wait for that, because who knows how good the series could be by the time, you know, by the time of its 50th anniversary. Um, so there's my little story of what my experiences with the series were, um, and what I hope for in the future, because... Like all of you, I can only hope for more great, more greatness from the series. So, now that I've gone through that, let's talk about what's been going on here. As I explained, it took me forever to figure out what I'm supposed to do here. I literally tried everything I could possibly think of before I re finally realized that I could cut his legs off and attack him that way. Um, so yeah, I, I finally figured it out, um, I wish, I wish I could still have my immediate reaction. I wish this boss fight didn't take forever. Um, at this point, yeah, I had to spe speed it up because I'm not, I'm not, go for the sake of a contest of finding out who can beat the game faster, I'm not going to worry about the contest when I, I'd much rather worry about the experience for viewers. Because I'm not gonna... You know, I'm not going to uh, victimize you guys just because I have a contest going. So, yeah. I'd also... Hmm, I wonder if this video will be up before Bayonetta returns. I'm not sure. Because Bayonetta has to be pushed back to a, a day, the day where I start, first started Let's Playing, rather than my YouTube thing. And there's the there's the boss go down. There he goes, George. There he goes. Woo! Phew. And there's the heart container. So what's in here? Well, we're about to learn something extraordinary. I kind of wish I could talk about more recent stuff that's been happening, but... Oh well. Ooh. 
Kind of looks like Maleficent. <laughs> Foolish fool! I'm not exactly sure what to make of this scene because it looks like Vi might be in pain. She's definitely struggling with fire, but who knows. Now raise it skyward and let it absorb both the flames and the skyward power. The flames of Feror have improved your sword, making it longer and sharp enough to do twice as much damage. The sword has been forged slightly. And now we must wake, make our way to the second sacred flame. Twilight Princess. No. Either way, that looked cool. And what's this? Triforce of Wisdom. On his hand? The Sacred Flame has purified your blade, enhancing and evolving it. With your sword now enhanced, you are ready to learn a new melody. We should return to the Isle of Songs. Well, okay then. But, I think that's enough for now because it's the end of the video. So, in the next episode of Skyward Sword, we will be heading to the the new the Isle of Song and learning a new song. So, I'll see you guys then.